Hey everyone, Dave Brown here from American Snippets. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Uh, today we have a very good friend of mine, uh, Joe Metcalf, on the show. Uh, for the last two years, Joe has been traveling around the world. He basically give, gave up a 11-year uh, sales job uh, two years ago to follow his passion and follow his bliss. And he's been all over the world, and he's got an incredible story, some wonderful insight. Uh, he's the author of uh, the book called The Inner Peace Experiment, which you can find on Amazon. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, but Joe, welcome to the show. Really happy to have you on, brother. Uh, Dave, it's great to be here, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, just amazing to be here on a podcast with you here, man. We were both uh, you know, digging in the real estate business about 10 years ago when, when we first met. And it's pretty cool to see what, where we're at now and how we've uh, kind of added things to our lives and reinvented things to our lives. And uh, pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's hard to believe it was uh, 10 years ago since we first met. We've uh, both taken some different paths along the way, and, and we, we basically also have uh, some, some similar connections as far as uh, a mentor in our lives. You know, I, Absolutely. Kent, Kent Clothier, who you've worked with for a number of years, and so have I. Um, that was your last uh, full-time job that you yeah. uh, all of a sudden decided to just uh, drop so you yeah. could- travel around the world. And I just think that's uh, really awesome. So tell, tell us a little bit as far as your background and sure. you know, what led you to that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, a really, uh, a really uh, interesting time in my life. You know, I was in real estate for 11 years, as you mentioned, and six years with, with Kent Clothier, who's been, like you said, a mentor to me and really helped me along the way. And, and uh, we've had some stories as well. Kent and I that uh, that you're aware of, but I can share with you. But um, uh, yeah, it was just a, a really incredible, you know, kind of time in my life. Over the last two years, I've been traveling the world, quit my sales job, and I've been pursuing a writing career. So, just published my first book, uh, came out in July, and uh, now working on my second book. And you know, really have taken on this um, alternative lifestyle, Dave. I've I've uh, basically sold all my possessions. I'm living out of my two bags and. Kind of created this minimalist lifestyle where I'm I'm focused more on on just you know following and pursuing my bliss and and creating my 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 uh, you know passion for writing and, and developing that and you know uh, kind of simplifying my life and kind of letting go of all the the stresses and the uh, you know kind of like the uh, you know stereotypical things that you you go after right the material success I I, I wanted to like focus more on less stress and more inner peace in my life versus material success. And that's something that I've adopted, not just over the last two years, um, but also, you know, going back to working with Kent my last couple of years, I really wanted to change my lifestyle. And, you know, a couple of things happened in my life that kind of led me to that. So I could get into that if you want to, a couple of stories that kind of led me to this kind of alternative, simplistic lifestyle, if you want me to get into that. Yeah. So, uh, have you always been interested in writing or is that just something that kind of, you know, came over time? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I was, I was never interested in writing. <laughs> never. Like I was never a creative person growing up. Like I wasn't like a, a writer as a young kid. Um, but there was an event that happened in my life that actually propelled me into writing, you know, kind of unexpectedly, Dave. And, and that event was the event with my mentor, your mentor, Kent Clothier, that, uh, was pretty incredible in my life, which was, um, well, I wouldn't say incredible. I would say more like really scary, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, uh, I know the story very well, yeah, but yeah. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you share it with everyone? So, yeah, they can get so, it. so I'll give the quick version. Um, so I was flying with Kent. I was 25 or tw I was 26 or 27 years old at the time. And I was flying with Kent from, uh, Memphis, Tennessee down back down to West Palm beach, Florida, coming from a real estate event. And, you know, we had a connection in Atlanta and we're flying from Atlanta to West Palm Beach, and we're about halfway through the flight. And you know, all of a sudden, I'm sitting in the back of the plane, and I start smelling something. I start smelling smoke, and all of a sudden, I realize that the entire cabin is filling up with smoke. And I had to put my shirt over my mouth because I couldn't breathe. And we hear the captain get on the mic and say, "Ladies and gentlemen, we understand that there is a fire on the cabin." Below the, below the cabin in the plane. We are now making an emergency landing in Tampa Bay, Florida. Put your hands on the seat in front of you. 
put your legs together, put your head down, and the three words you never want to hear on a plane while you're flying, brace for impact. And, you know, it was the, the, the scariest, the, the, the longest, the most strangest 20 minutes of my life, you know, dealing with the fact that I thought I was going to die. And, um, you know, it was just a, a fascinating experience. But what that experience did, obviously, we, we were able to land the, the plane. The, the plane fire didn't, didn't blow up the plane, so we were able to land. But from that point in time, that experience, they've led to my first ever blog post. And I wrote about that experience and created my blog back when I was, you know, 27 years old. This is some six years ago. And um, sure, it's that, a, I mean, that's, that a, that, me. that's a life changing experience. I mean, it just puts, I mean, I had to put things in perspective. I mean, yeah, as yeah. far as how, how fragile life is and, and how special it is. And all of a sudden, you know, the cabin's filling with smoke and, you know, yeah, you're like, crazy. you're like, holy crap, like what's, what's about to happen? And, and probably a little bit of a shock and awe and, you know, all those emotions going through you. I can't imagine what that was like. hundred percent. Like I, I, you never think about death, you know, unfortunately we're in a society that kind of like just puts off the idea of death. Like we won't really contemplate our death, uh, especially when you're 26 years old, you know, you think you're invincible, you know, per perfect health and, and whatnot. But, you know, I had to think about my death. What's going to happen here? Did, did I accomplish everything that I wanted to accomplish? You know, do I feel satisfied with my life right now? Was there any things that I left uh, undone that I wanted to to pursue and go after? I thought about my family, like how would my family feel? You know, it was just the strangest, the the most intense yeah. twenty minutes of my life. And you know, luckily the plane landed. Whatever happened, that that fire dissipated underneath the cabin, and uh, we had an emergency landing in Tampa Bay. And and uh, from that point in time, I just said, you know, this is such a, a life changing experience. That I want to share this on paper, and I, I I remember like you know getting my first blog set up on on WordPress, like like the free site up, and then I just you know I just wrote out like this this whole article about the experience, and I wanted to be as vivid and as descriptive and as um, uh, real life as I could in the article, and, and it kind of brought the whole experience back to life for me. I remember like shaking as I was like typing yeah, up sure. the, the article, right? It, it came back to life for me, and I just felt. I felt like this um, creative burst of, of sharing and writing and also being able to help people through my experience. And, um, you know, that I've always been like an, an av you know, an avid reader in my 20s, you know, reading personal development books. And, you know, I loved reading books that inspired me. So I wanted to be able to do that for others through my blog. So um, that event led to like my writing, my writing per se. But I didn't like just quit my job after that experience. You know, I, I kept working for Kent for a good good four or five years, but that seed of writing, um, was, was, was planted and just kept continuing to grow slowly and slowly and slowly until I got to the point where I was like, you know, I want to start writing full time. Right. I, I saved up a bit of money and I had a friend that, uh, helped me and encouraged me to, you know, leave my job and start traveling the world with him. So that now, was the, the, the first seed. Now I remember, you know, I, we had Kent on the podcast here too, uh, not you know earlier in the year, and he yeah. he shares that same story, of, you know, being on the airplane on the airplane, of, yeah, in detail, and you know what what came of that for him, right? Was you know he has his motto now, which, you know, his saying, "The time is now," right? Because yeah. time is short; it's precious, and when you're in yeah. a moment like that, you know, it all flashes before your eyes, and you're like, "Crap, um, right. You know, I better get going. And yeah. for you, it turned into, uh, you know, writing and, and putting this on paper. Then you realized a new passion that you had and yeah. you started to follow that. Um, but then some other things came about too, as far as your, your, your sales job with Kent yes. and you started getting into public speaking and you, yes. you just, you, something was missing, right? You just weren't feeling like yeah. you were going down the right path or, or whatever. And, and yeah. explain a little more about that. Perfect, perfect segue, man, because, you know, that, that was the seed of writing, you know, when, when I started developing a writing uh, inclination and, and desire to start writing, but I was still working for Kent, you know, and I still was, was making a, a really good income with Kent and I was enjoying my job, but, you know, there was something uh, about just my, and it was all me, Dave, it was like my perspective at that time. I was just, I was chasing material success. You know, I was like maybe 26 at the time, right? And you know, I was, I was chasing, 
um, material success. I was chasing recognition. I, I put all this weight into wanting to be liked, into wanting to be approved by, by my boss, by my coworkers, by my colleagues, by people in the industry. I wanted to prove to people that I was some like some like hot shot business guy for whatever reason, right? Like I saw all these guys public speaking and I, I was like, oh, I want to become a public speaker, right? Or, you know, I got to make six figures and, yeah, and yeah. you well, know, yeah. You know the 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 adage right uh you know if you chase money money runs right I think yeah. that, I think that goes you know for anything if you're if you're chasing after it you know it's going to just pull away from you Exactly and it never satisfies another way to say it never satisfies you right like yeah. um and again like I'm extremely grateful for my job because I grew so much as a person right and it was the process I had to go through and it gave me the savings to travel the world right so I'm very aware of that right like it, it gave me it gave me the the opportunity, the financial freedom to to have a little bit of savings to go out and travel on a budget, right? Uh, but that being said, I, I was still there was still something inside me, Dave, that was like really uh, like irking, right? It was like this tolerable anxiety where like I, I wasn't truly happy doing the sales work, you know, 100% of the time, right? Like it was it was a great paycheck, right? And I worked with great people, but there was this this calling to to keep writing and to keep pursuing my own brand and doing something on my own, right? I just didn't know what that looked like. I, I just, I kept writing, I kept blogging on the weekends and, you know, continued working for Kent and continued work, working in the real estate industry. So, you know, I, I was really tied up in a lot of areas of the business. I was, I was a manager, I was doing my own phone sales, and I was also doing public speaking, as you mentioned. And I was on the road speaking, you know, once or twice a month at uh, real estate events and basically doing trainings or, you know, selling products from stage. And again, it was a very lucrative opportunity, but, um, for some reason, I just still didn't feel like I was doing what I was called to do. And, and, um, you know, I just was very stressed out at the time. And there was this one scenario, which was kind of like the second big event that happened in my life that kind of led to this, this new lifestyle of mine that kind of was the the straw that broke the camel's back. And this was a, a fascinating one. And, and it's, it's also a personal one. And I was afraid to share this for a long time with, with a lot of people. Uh, and I shared it in my book, but, um, I was on stage in Huntsville, Alabama of all places. And, um, I'm speaking to a crowd of maybe 70 people, 75 people. And I'm, I'm halfway through my presentation. One that I've done, you know, hundreds of times before, literally I've done it so many times, my normal real estate presentation. And I'm halfway through the presentation, Dave. And I start seeing spots and my heart rate starts going up like, like, 10 times faster than what it, what it normally is. And I start getting dizzy and like, I have a straight up panic attack on stage in front of 70 people. And I don't know what to do. Like, I'm literally about to like freaking just cry. <laughs> like, I don't know what yeah. to do, man. I feel like I'm going to faint and I just got to run out and leave the, the entire place in front of 70 people. So I was like, what am I going to do here? I, I, I literally just told the crowd, Hey, give me two minutes. I had the wrong slide up and I sat down, <laughs> I sat down in front of my computer, drank water and just caught my breath. Like literally it was the most awkward three minutes, like in, in the history of like live presentations. <laughs> and, um, I, I was able to gather myself and just finish the presentation just with lower energy. But like, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's, I need a, to that's a that's a sign. I mean, you know, that's yeah, yeah. That was a sign, man. And I, I, I was like, I need to like just reevaluate my life here and and simplify things. And you know, I told Kent right after that, I was like, Kent, you know, I don't want to public speak anymore. I actually didn't have the courage to tell him I had a panic attack on stage at the time, but I, I, I told him I didn't want to 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 public speak anymore. And you know, luckily Kent was very flexible, you know, as an employer, he was very open with me and flexible. And he, he gave me lots of flexibility to kind of go in any direction I want within the company. So for that, I'm extremely grateful. And I was able to drop that. And, um, I went further too. I simplified further. You know, I basically, uh, asked Kent if I can lower my role within the company, basically not to become a manager anymore and just, just focus on my own phone sales. So I just focused on my own phone sales and I started eliminating like uh, responsibilities within the company so I can just focus on one area. And 
that you, helped. Do you that think, helped big do you, time. Do you think that was a big uh, part of that? I mean, just in terms of having so many roles and so many jobs that you felt you were being pulled in all sorts of directions and you didn't have a clear path as far as what you were most happy doing? 100%. I was definitely getting... I was getting, you know, pulled in too many different directions and I was just spread too thin. Yeah. And and um the ironic thing is is as I relinquished responsibility and just focused on one area and specialized, my income started skyrocketing. You know what I mean? Like even though sure. like you'd think that like since I had more responsibilities and I had more um, you know, kind of hands in the pot within the company, I'd have a bigger income, but that wasn't the case. Like you know, it's like the, the adage, right? You know, jack of all trades, master of none, right? It's like I, I was not like focused in any area, so I couldn't accelerate and maximize that area, yeah. you know, yeah. within work. So, um, you know, once that happened, the last two years at my job, my income just skyrocketed and I was able to just focus on my sales. I, you know, I stopped traveling on the road. I stopped, um, you know, managing other sales reps and and my income skyrocketed. And, and at the same time, I started taking a very deep look at, you know, spirituality and mindfulness. Uh, I started meditating and, um, now you had, you know, the, ti- now you had the time to do those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was a combination of simplifying at work and also, you know, spending my extra time, like focusing on, on, you know, peace of mind. And, you know, after that panic attack, I really prioritized my inner peace, Dave. Like I really prioritized my peace of mind and, what became paramount to me was no stress. I just wanted to eradicate stress from my life. And that if that meant less money in my life, I was okay with that. If that meant, you know, not traveling to different work functions, I was okay with that. I, I just, I really wanted to simplify my life. And, you know, it, it just kind of led to this, this whole new mentality I had about life. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, it actually increased my income, you know, counterintuitively, it actually increased my income, which was great. And, um, you know, as I kept doing this, I had more time to write and I started developing the the passion for writing more and more. And, um, you know, I had a bit of money saved up and I was like, you know what, now's a time to start thinking about the next steps in my life. And that's when a, a friend introduced, well, not introduced me, but encouraged me to, to travel the world with him. And he kind of pushed me over the edge to, to actually quit that job, which was not an easy, easy decision too, because I was making great money and I was with great people. But yeah, I know I, that was, that was, I mean, it. you know, at the time, I, I mean, even still to this day, it was probably very much like family. Um, yeah. Oh, you, you're, for sure. And they still are. Yeah. And they right. Still are, so. Right. You were with them for, I mean, for me too. Um, yeah. You were with them for quite, quite a long time. So that must've been a very difficult decision. Not only that, but you're about to embark on a whole new adventure, something very uncomfortable that you've never done. Not only that yeah. you're leaving your job, but you're leaving, you know, friends and family behind too. Yeah. And, you know, so you took this leap of faith about what, uh, Two years ago now? About two years ago, yeah. Yeah. So like you said, leap of faith. It was like a, a true um I talk about this in the book. I invested into uncertainty. You know what I mean? I really invested into not knowing what was gonna happen, you know, and that takes that takes um, you know, a willingness to kind of like make some mistakes. It takes a willingness to um kind of be like okay with with change, right? Being okay with change, being okay with um not knowing what's gonna happen, being okay with the unknown. And these are all like part of the part of the journey right and it doesn't mean that you have to travel the world but just stepping into something that's going to be uncomfortable and i i just i did that 100 and and um i gotta say it's been one of the best decisions i've ever made in my life because i've grown so much as a person because because of it i got sure. to experience so much and um it's led me to where i am now which is um i'm back here and i'm i'm working on my second book and um excited about it yeah yeah i mean if you uh, you know if if you want to if you want things to change, you have to change, right? If you want exactly. different outcomes and different results, you have to do different things. You can't be, yeah. keep doing the same thing that you've been doing, right? And one hundred percent. And you got to get out of your comfort zone. You, you like you said, you got to you got to get out of this this mentality of of you have to take some risks. You know, you have to take some risks, and and you have to, you know, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Um, and and again, it happens over time. I tell people this, like you know, that want to quit their job, that they want to um, travel the world, like. I, I didn't do it, you know, like the first day I thought about it, right? I, I stayed with the company for another, you know, two, two and a half years after that panic attack, right? I, I stuck through it, but I, I was able to simplify my situation and, and start saving money to get to that point where I, I could go out there and I could start a new venture, like this writing career, sure. you know, because I, I had the money saved up. So uh, I tell people to be patient, man, and, and to, to um, 
you know, take their time and, and to save money and to, you know, focus on whatever your bliss is, you know, right now, it doesn't mean you have to quit your day job. It means that you just can, you know, carve out, you know, five, 10 minutes a day sure. and, and invest in the, those five or 10 minutes a day towards what your bliss is, whatever it is, if it's art, if it's writing, if it's, um, you know, a, a new business venture, creating a, some kind of technology, whatever it might be, you can start doing that on the side. And, and that, that five, 10 minutes that you've invested in can keep growing and growing and growing until you, you're able to quit that job. So it takes time. You know, I don't want to give people the false illusion that it just happens overnight. Right. Right. And I think people who, who have that insight and, uh, to follow their dreams and, and start following their bliss, like that can lead them down other paths too. Cause now all of a sudden they're a little more happier in life and they realize that the decisions that they made, uh, put them in a better place. And all of a sudden a little, a little light bulb goes off where you can start taking that, that experience and start impacting other people at the same time and yeah. have a, and having a, a bigger impact or a bigger calling. So you have a start creating a mission in life. And, and that's something that American Sip is, is, is really uh, passionate about is living a life by design, doing things that makes you happy, but doing it in a way that, that you can start to give back to other people. And yeah. I know through your experience in traveling, you have a bigger, bigger, something bigger than yourself now that you've been involved with a few times in terms of uh, helping build uh, housing in, in Haiti, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great, man. And, and I love that aspect too. It's like once you've developed your passion and once you're able to to live your bliss by sharing that bliss and you know doing something for a higher cause than yourself is is really wonderful, man. So uh, I love what you're you're sharing and you're doing with this podcast. So cool. Um, yeah, Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Of course. So yeah, you know, the last five years I've been part of a, a group in Haiti that's been building villages and. Every year now for the last, uh, I believe it's like 14 years, a guy by the name of Frank McKitty has been building villages it's called the Caring House Project. And I've been contributing towards that over the last five years and had the, the privilege to go to these villages the last four out of five years to see the, the work being done and, and to see the impact that we're making to these people and providing sustainable um, food and water and, and, and housing to these people. And, and uh, it's been pretty special. So, you know, I've, I've tried to do that and, and, try to try to give as much as I can and provide an impact to the world um you know as I'm I'm making as as I'm making money so it's just a it's a wonderful thing and and what's so great about that too is like when you give you know when I started giving and started uh, providing to uh, you know a, a cause bigger than myself or a charity like I've never really had to worry about money again you know what I mean it's it's funny how the universe works right when you when you give um you know the, the universe provides back to you yeah. tenfold right Love through reciprocity yeah yeah, like, and, and through this this group in Haiti is a perfect example because, like, you know, not only is it just a charity group, but it's kind of like a mastermind in a way. It's like, it's like, you know, we get together for three days each year, and it's like, it's you know, it's high quality people. If people are, you know, investing in, and willing to go to Haiti for a charity, you know, they're a high quality person, right? And and they're they got their own business going on or this really good stuff going on, and you know, we get to share ideas, we get to make connections. You know, I, I've had people that have helps promote my book. I've got people that have helped, you know, um, give me suggestions for my book or for uh, new business opportunities that I want to get involved in. So, you know, the value that I've received is, is 10 times more than what I've given. So it's, it's a beautiful thing when you, when you, you come from that place of, of giving in abundance, right? You, you, like you said, law of reciprocity, it comes back to you tenfold. Yeah. Great lesson there. Yeah, man. So, you know, that took you to, uh, basically landing in, the concrete jungle, right? New York, yeah. New York City, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, gave you the uh, the ideas and concepts and everything that you share in this book, the Inner Peace Exper Experiment, uh, yeah. from chaos to calm. Thirty days in New York City's concrete jungle. Yeah, man. Yeah. So tell us, tell us about that that experience. I mean, you uh, how'd you land in New York City? I know you're you're originally from New Jersey, right? Your your yeah. family and your immediate yeah. family, but then you. Uh, what you just decided? Hey, I'm going to live in New York for 30 days. Make this part of my, you know, world travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Really, I was in South America for seven months, and I was coming back home for um, a friend's wedding in May. And my mom was also getting a, a, a knee operation, a knee replacement surgery um, in June. So I was going to stay with her for a couple months and just, you know, help her around the house while she recovers, and uh, just take a little break from my travels before. The plan was to go to to Asia after that, but um, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, you know, I'm I'm right here in New York, right, right near New York City. I grew up seven miles outside the city, and I 
I love New York, man. Like it's something that just calls to me about New York. And I was like, I've never experienced living in the city. Why not do it now? You know? So basically I, I looked on Craigslist and I found a, you know, a sublet for, for 30 days. I just got like a tiny little, you know, bedroom with like, without a closet. That was the, you know, the, the cheapest thing I can find in New York city, right in the lower East side, like the heart of lower Manhattan. And, uh, and I was like, I'm just going to experience New York City for 30 days once my mom was healthy enough from her knee operation. And, uh, you know, that was that was unique because um, I was like at like kind of a crossroads, too, because I just traveled for seven months. And that was like kind of like my travel time to experience. I was blogging, but I realized I didn't have like a, a like a, a, a real project to, to work on. And I was like, you know what, let me just try to do a blog series, you know, like write a, like a 30 day blog series about my time in New York. And sure. I was like, what, why, why not, why not just turn this into a book? So that's how the idea was created. And I, I figured that I would, you know, kind of reflect on how I changed from like this stressed out business guy that was always chasing material success to someone that, you know, sold all their possessions and started living out of two backpacks and cared more about inner peace and eradicating stress than, than so much of like the, the material success and the recognition and the, the um, approval that I was always chasing in my 20s, you know what I mean? So it was like that transition. And if I have some little stories in between during my 30 days in New York, I'll, I'll throw those in there in the book. So it's a, it's like a, it's a reflection memoir along with some, you know, present moment stories during my time in New York City, just to 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 show how I've grown and how I've become who I am in the book. So um, yeah, it was it was a fun experience, man. I I, uh, I would I would you know kind of put myself out there in New York too. Like, I think there was one chapter where I, I shared, like, I just would ask random people in bars or restaurants or, or cafes, you know, what their definition of success was. Right. And, uh, or just talk to some, some, some random guy at the the bench in Tompkins square park in, in the East village. And, you know, I, I got so much, um, I had so much enjoyment and so much uh, perspective from these, these random conversations with strangers, which was really fulfilling. Awesome. Yeah. Success means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So that must yeah. have been, you know, uh, quite eye opening as far as what, because I, what's really cool in the book is when, when you're asking those questions, uh, asking that question to the 19 different people, uh, yeah. you see how diverse, you know, <laughs> yeah. New York City really is. I mean, people are, are from Australia. They're from France. I mean, they're from all they're over France. the world. Yeah. 100%. And you're just randomly, you know, going up yeah. to them and asking them. So that was pretty cool. It's the um, world within the world, right? Yeah, totally. And I don't want to give a lot away in the in the book because I definitely want to uh, encourage people to to pick it up off of Amazon. Um, but there's a couple key points in in the book that really uh, struck with me. Um, one was the like the the concept of gap insanity. Yeah, um, where you know you're you're where you are now, right? And then yeah. you you want to be someplace else. So yeah. you know A and B. And you're right. you're stuck in the middle. So you're right. here, but you really want to be there. And being stuck in the middle can cause a tremendous amount of you know anxiety, stress, stress yeah, maybe grief, yep. um, disappointment, uh, yep. all those negative energies that we really don't want to be, you know, yeah. fo- focusing on day in yeah. and day out. So you know, 100. You know, tell us a little bit about that about that and how you dealt with that personally yourself, and and maybe some advice on other people who feel you know yeah. s- stuck or in a rut. Yeah, it's it's a great great thing, and I, I dealt with this for years. In fact, I still deal with it, right? We all do, I'm right? Still, I mean, I'm I'm still a work in progress, right? Like I still get dissatisfied about things. I'll I'll walk past a bookstore and I'll be like, oh, why isn't my book on on the uh, the bestseller front table there? You know what I mean? Like you you naturally get this this like you know um this this degree of like comparison. You're like, oh, why aren't I where that person is right now, right? And and um you know there's there's just a you know, a, a lot to it. Right. But at the end of the day, gap insanity, what is it? As you mentioned, it's, you know, you're at point A or you're between point A and point B, but you want to be at point B. You want to have the degree or you want to have the the income level or you want to have the, the best selling book, whatever the case might be. You want to be at point B, but you're not there yet. But because you're not there yet, you're going insane. Hence gap insanity. So, you know, what, what can you do to kind of um, get out of gap insanity or at least lessen lessen the, the stress of gap insanity. And, and, you know, again, this kind of sounds cliche, but I'm going to break it down. And, and I, I'm truly a believer in this. It's like, it's like being aware and becoming present, right? And, and how do you do that? Well, 
what's another way of being present? Well, for me, it's gratitude. And, you know, one exercise that I do every single day, Dave, is I write down what I'm grateful for. You know what I mean? And, you know, part of being uh, abundant is realizing the good that's already in your life. And every day without fail, I've been doing this for like four or five years now, I write down five things I'm grateful for to start my day. You know what I mean? And, and that just puts me in a better place, right? Um, I also meditate. You know, I also meditate and, and meditation has been a wonderful thing for me over the last four or five years just to to be aware of my thoughts. Right. Because what is it? it? It's a practice. Right. It's a practice for when daily life hits and we start getting stressed out to kind of check in with ourselves and be like, all right, that's just a, a thought. And, you know, we we think thoughts like we breathe air. It's just a natural thing. And I just try not to let those thoughts get the best of me. And meditation is just like a way to autocorrect your mind. Just like if you're doing yoga or you're doing running and, you know, you feel yourself slouching and, you know, all right, I'm slouching, but the yoga reminds you to sit up straight, you know, and, and work on your posture. It's, it's a way to autocorrect. So, you know, meditation has been a, a, a wonderful thing for me in terms of uh, getting present and being coming aware of my thoughts. Um, gratitude exercise of writing down five things I'm grateful for every day and, and um, you know, just continuing to, 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 to focus on the work, this is a big one too, is like whatever work you're focusing on, um, you know, focus on the work, focus on the daily enjoyment of the work, right? Without thinking about the results, you know, let go of the results because the results will take care of themselves, right? And if you just focus on, on doing a good job every day with what you're passionate about or, or the work that you have in front of you, the results will take care of themselves. And, and, you know, point B is not going anywhere. She's right there waiting for you. You know, if you just, you know, kind of, you know, stay, stay, um, kind of like in tune, stay, you know, kind of at peace with what you're doing. And again, the results will take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. One of the a podcasts that I listen to, you know, he talks about, and this is with anything in order to believe you have to do the work first, right? You can't, yeah. the work comes first. Right, and, and when you focus on the work, you start to see some of the the results come just naturally, and yeah. and as that momentum builds, then the belief starts to come. So it's like losing weight, right? You want to lose, you know, fifty pounds because you're a little bit overweight. So you're going to the gym every day for a month, and you're stepping on the scale every two weeks, and nothing's changing. Right? You, right. Haven't, you haven't lost a pound, but yeah, you go into the forty fifth day because you're you're continuing to do the work and you're you're committed to the process, and all of a sudden. You dropped five pounds. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, because and, and, and then now you start to have the belief and you realize that things, you know, do take a little time. It doesn't happen yeah. overnight. Yeah. And right. I am on I am on my way to point B. Right. Exactly. You have to realize that. And then, you know, it, it's so interesting though, too, because like, you know, in between those forty five days, like you have to accept that you're not at five pounds lower yet. You you have to accept it, right? Like you kinda it might it might doesn't mean that you're happy with the fact that you haven't lost the weight yet, but if you accept it. And you kind of say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm at peace with this right now, but you're still taking action towards losing that weight. You're controlling what you can control, right? A lot of stress comes from when we try to do things that are out of our control. And True. what's out of our control is we can't, we can't lose 15 pounds in one day, right? That takes, that takes 45 days. But what we can do is we can lose half a, half a pound in two or three days, right? right? We can control that. Right. You know what I mean? So once you kind of get clear on that, what you can control from what you can't control and you don't let the the uncontrollable play with you too much like that's where you you start finding peace right like and, and that place from that place of peace that place of inner peace that place of acceptance is when the magic can start happening too where you can start taking the action so it's a combination right it's a combination of of you know deliberate action and and pro progress but also while you're progressing is kind of like accepting where you're at and being okay with that you know what i mean right Right. Yeah. So what was um, what was one of the biggest lessons that y your experience in New York gave you? If, I mean, if you could name one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, good question. Um, uh, you know, in New York, what what was something that really uh, helped me? I, I think just. Uh, um, you know, how how like. Uh, you know, compa the comparing mind always tries to play with you, right? And just being aware of that, like when you when you're in New York City, you see the 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 business guy, right, with the with the really slick suit and the fancy watch, right? Or you see, you know, the the nice car, and you see like the the beautiful uh, apartment in in 
the, you know, the corner penthouse, and you're like, wow, you know, I, I want to have these things. And, and like, I, I think this comes back to gap insanity a little bit. It's like, it's like, Hey, don't, don't get upset that you don't have these things. Just, you know, accept where you're at and, and you start working slowly towards that and progressing towards that. So I think just, um, for me, it's, it's like, to be aware of, of my mind always comparing and to let go of that, you know what I mean? And which is one of the hardest things to do, but, uh, I'm trying to work on that as, as, as best I can. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And then you also, um, I love the, uh, one thing in the book too, is, uh, digital silence. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that we should, we should make that like a national holiday. Like <laughs> yeah, literally, man, literally. I mean, they have, da- they have days for everything now. I think like a couple of days ago, it was like international, like hot chocolate day or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. They, sh- they should have in- international, uh, you know, digital silence day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree, man. And, and you know, that, that, that one excerpt came from, I was reading a book, um, about Gandhi or a guy that met Con- Gandhi and, uh, Gandhi for the last, you know, like quarter of his life would not speak a word on Mondays. It was his day to observe silence. And, uh, you know, that was meant to just handle his like correspondence and his letters at first. Yeah. But then that, that eventually became a spiritual practice for him. It went from being practical to spiritual and he just got a, a richness, uh, a, like a, a deepening to his life and to present moment awareness through that day of silence. And I was like thinking to myself, I was like, Man, I, I got to do this for 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 phones and computers and screens, and just to like have one day just to myself. And I actually just read, I finished reading it just the other day, a beautiful book called um, "The Art of Stillness" by um, Pico Iyer, and it's just all about the um, just to find stillness in your life and to find silence. It's 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 vital, like it's vital to our our lives to turn everything off and to just reflect and to you know, go for an hour walk without your cell phone or to, yeah. you know, to, to literally shut your, your phone off and to not watch TV before bed for a couple hours. Right. Just so you can have time to kind of like re re-energize and but not I, get so, sucked, sucked into it. Right. Yeah. And not only that, it's, it's, uh, not only are you more present with yourself, but you're more present with who you're, whoever you're with. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way, you know, with my kids, you know, taking a day just to shut, shut off all devices and just be present with them. hundred um, percent, man. And not just yourself. So it yeah. works. It works both ways. I mean, I love that idea. Love that yeah. concept. I yeah. um, I know both of us are big fans of Tim Ferriss, um, yeah. who has yeah. a, a great blog. You know, uh, New York Times bestseller multiple yeah. times. Um, yeah. The Four Hour Work Week. And yeah. uh, I know just recently he took um, uh, ten days of silence. Yeah. Where he couldn't no communication. He couldn't yeah. sp- speak to anybody. Yeah. None of it. It's just yeah. ten days with him and his thoughts. Yeah. Um, I did the same thing. I did the same thing in India, Dave. Did I you did really? A 10 day silent meditation ret- retreat back in October in India. It was the most challenging, I difficult ima- and, and most beautiful experience of one of my most beautiful experiences of my life, which was, it was fascinating. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, what, uh, what, what about you? Like, what's like one thing, if you don't mind me asking, what's something that you, you do to kind of like, kind of, um, create your own space or kind of like your own way that you meditate or, or reflect and have time to yourself each week. Do you have a, a ritual or anything that you do? Yeah, it, it's running, you know, it's okay. And it's not, I mean, so much, not even so much running, but it could be a combination of running or hiking or just, just, yeah. a, just a walk in the woods. Like, uh, yeah. for, for me, it's, um, when I run or I, I do any of those, it, I ha- I have to be in the woods. Like, yeah, I can't just go out in the street and run the street. Like yeah, nature, man. Yeah. I go into nature and I, I do carriage trails and you know, that's, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm at peace. And the yeah. funny thing about that is, is, is with that, I guess, runner's high that, you know, the, that, the energy that you get from it, uh, yeah. the, the ideas just start flying, flowing, it, flowing into your head when you they just, do. when you just take that break from, you know, all the things that you have to take care of. Yeah, yeah. Just to, em- to empty, right? Once you empty, yeah. just the the creativity starts flowing because you're not reactive anymore to like some Facebook notification. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's wonderful, man. And I, and I think finding time to do that, whether it's you know fifteen to twenty minutes a day, I yeah. think you know can be really powerful. Life changing. Life changing. Life changing. Yeah. yeah. And it's so simple too. It, it sounds like like it sounds like just advice that's too simple to be told, yeah. but it, it really it really is life changing. Yeah, and there's always plenty of time, right? You just have yeah. to you just have to make it. Exactly. So your uh, 22 year old self, I know you 
you talked about <laughs> this in the book a little bit, but yeah. uh, one thing right now that you would um, you would share with your little insight yeah. that you would give your 22 year old self. Uh, I got this one. I I know this one hands down. My number one thing is is to don't be so excited about everything right off the bat. Like don't get overexcited. Like I was chill out. Early, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. My my twenty year old self, my even my twenty five, heck, even my thirty year old self, like three years ago, like I would just get so excited about uh, every like business opportunity, every you know shiny object syndrome. You know, every, every, every new, uh, venture, you know, I would just get so excited for my own good without really thinking things through. And, and, um, you know, that would, that would come back to bite me a lot. You know, I made a couple not so great real estate investments when I was in my early twenties that I just was so, you know, in a rush to get into. It's like, you know, you don't have to be in a rush to get into everything, you know, instead of, you know, trying to chase the quick money, you know, sit back and, and, and wait things out a little bit and just, Instead of in, in investing in these quick money schemes and these these opportunities that you think are gonna you know, make you millions, you know, focus on on the days that make you feel good. Focus on your bliss uh, and invest in that. And you know, uh, that that would be the advice that I give my my twenty two year old self is just to not get excited as fast. Cool. And what, one last question here. Um, you know, we're a big uh, proponent of uh, and believer in the American dream, right? Uh, yeah. contrary to what a lot of people believe that, you know, the American dream is dead. And uh, I just don't believe that. And neither does Barbara. And there's so much opportunity right now in the country and in the world yeah. that, you know, you yeah. can kind of create, create your own bliss, right? Create yeah. a lifestyle by design, a life by design, all those right. things. So what is, what is the American dream, you know, mean to you? Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I, I think it's, it's really to uh, pursue your bliss. You know, I, I really believe that. And, and, Joseph Campbell's famous for saying that line, you know, follow follow your bliss and and doors will open for you where you you never thought possible. And I truly believe that is like, you know, once you you find your bliss and you follow your bliss, um, you know, you you really that's when you really get uh you start to see the magic start to happen and you you become truly present when you're following something that you enjoy and you know, you're not even thinking about time, right? So, um, you know, my my thing is 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 follow your bliss and and um you know, do something that you really are going to enjoy. And, and, uh, again, that's easier said than done. I know people have to make an income and have to do things out there that, you know, might not be their bliss at the moment. But, um, a follow up to that is, is, Hey, whenever you do find that bliss, just commit to investing, you know, 10 minutes a day towards that bliss and, and, you know, just, you know, invest in, into that, that bank account of bliss, if you will, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it might not be at first. It might not be a full day at first, or even a, something that you can do as a as a career at first. But everyone's got ten minutes where you can invest in that bliss, whether that's a book about something that you want to pursue, or it's a um, you know writing down ten ideas about what you want to pursue. Whatever it might be, you can you can start carving out time to do that. You know, we live in in America. There's so much opportunity here. You really can follow your your dream. You can follow your vision, and you can you can do it. Just got to be you know, chip away, uh, bit by bit, inch by inch. And, and you'll start to see though, those bank accounts of bliss going from minutes to hours to, to days, months and years. So yeah. that's, yeah. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. We, I mean, we're, we're, we live in a society that allows that, or, I mean, we have the freedoms, <clears throat> the choice, the opportunity yeah. where, yeah. you know, a lot of other places, you know, don't necessarily have that. And yeah. And I've seen so, a lot of those places too. And, and I know you have, people, and that's and why I bring it up. Just, not yeah. in the not in the same position that we are in the states, so it's right. um something to take advantage of, you know, and to be aware of. Exactly, exactly. Cool. Well, Joe, it was it was awesome having you on on the podcast today on the show. Um, why don't you tell people where they can uh, follow you, uh, find your book, uh, the Inner Peace Experiment? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. So uh, you can go to Amazon if you want to pick up my book. It's uh, you can search for the Inner Peace Experiment or Joe Metcalf. Uh, on Amazon, you can get a copy of it. There's the ebook version as well as the paperback version. Uh, you can also reach out to me on my website, joemetcalf.net. And if you'd like, you can subscribe to my email right there from my website, joemetcalf.net. And I'll, you know, have, uh, you know, updates on my email and some personal communication with you on my email, uh, each month, if you'd like to do that. And then, uh, also I do a lot of posting on Instagram as well. My handle is joemetcalf, no spaces with a, any at the end. So. Joe Metcalf. And, and, uh, I love to hear from you. Just, uh, 
say hello and, and uh, ask me a question or two if you'd like and be great to connect. Real quick, Joe, tell us what's in store for, for Joe Metcalf uh, over the next uh, year. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Good question. So it's it's, it's kind of a, a turning the corner for me here. You know, I'm on my travels are over. I'm going to stay in the States now for for the good part of 2018. And I'm going to work on my second book about my experiences in India. And I've also put together some uh, small little masterminds. So I'm, I'm going to do five or six masterminds in 2018, kind of putting a group of five to six people together and, you know, sharing a lot about the concepts of my book, uh, The Inner Priest Experiment, and doing, you know, group meditations and uh, group journaling exercises, kind of working out what they're looking to accomplish for their year and their vision, as well as developing more peace of mind and mindfulness in their life. So we'll see. I'm going to call it the uh, the Inner Peace, Inner Work Masterminds and and do small little groups here in 2018. So that's a, a new venture I have in, in store. Great stuff, man. Great stuff, Joe. Uh, man, thank you, dude. I appreciate you. Yeah, Joe, really, really a pleasure having you on today. Very grateful to have you here and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, likewise, man. Thank you. All right. Take care. See ya.